Hey fam, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a beautiful circle dress with stylish sleeve. My name is Justina and you're welcome to my channel. So this is what the sleeve is looking like. It's really a beautiful sleeve. And also we're going to be making use of a shoulder dart to achieve this. Without further ado, let's just start. I'm going to be starting with the lower part. And for my waist circumference, it is 27 inches. That is the waist round, okay? And because this is a full circle dress, I added one inch to that 27 inches just for my zipper allowance at the back, and that is making it 28. Now, we have a constant in fashion. Whenever you want to cut out a full circle dress, you are required to divide by 6.28. So after dividing, I've been able to get my circumference, which is 4.45. And to this 4.45, I'll be making use of 26 inches as my skirt length my original skirt length is 25 as you can see displayed but i'm adding one inch for my toning allowance on the lower end of the skirt to make it 26 inches so i'm just going to add 4.45 plus 26 inches and that gave me a total of 30.45 so for you to know the amount of fabric you are going to need you must be able to get 30.45 after folding your fabric into four just look at the way i'm folding my mine was folded into two initially and that too i'm folding it into four again and i'm just going to keep folding until i get that 30.45 because basically that is what i'm going to need in order to be able to cut out my full circle for the lower part of this dress Okay, now I've been able to get this part. I've been able to get the required measurement, okay? So I'm just going to straighten this out and I'm going to be pinning this down. You want to ensure you're pinning properly in order to avoid, um, in order to prevent your fabric from shifting while you are cutting. Another good thing to notice for this particular tutorial, I made use of 1.5 inch 1.5 trouser length of fabric and this is a structured fabric so i'm just going to go to the top end of this skirt okay the folded region and i'm going to be marking out my circumference which is 4.45 remember we divided the waist measurements plus one by 6.28 which i said is a constant and the answer i got was 4.45 so i'm just marking this on the folded edge the top folded edge of this fabric so i'm going to be taking that down okay and after doing that you will go up by 0 0.5 inch now i did my together and the reason why we always go up by 0 0.5 is because one thing about cutting flares that the different fabric have different stretch measurements so you want to be on the saver side and go up so that you your fabric will not stretch beyond what you want. So after doing that, from that particular original measurement, now I'm going to be taking my 26 inches. 26 inches is the length I need for the lower part of this dress. So I'm going to be shifting my tape measure around. I'm shifting my tape measure around in order to have a perfect circle. And after doing that, I'm just going to highlight my lines and I'm going to cross check again before going ahead to cut finally. Okay, so at this point, I think everything is set. I'm just going to move closer so you can see. So this is what the lines are looking like so you want to make use of your pattern master you can make use of your pattern master to ensure that everything you are doing is straight so look at the upper end the first line the second line is the original measurement the first line is more like the sewing allowance at the top so i'm just going to go ahead to cut and that is going to be all for the lower part of this dress that's just it basically so when i open one thing i like to do is I'm going to be opening open one part. I'll open one part, okay? But before that, I like to cross check my waist circumference, okay? My waist circumference, I like to cross check with what I have, if it's accurate 
or not. The original waist circumference here is 27 plus 1 inch for um, um, zipper allowance at the back. So this is what the fold is looking like. And it's looking beautiful already, even if it, even though it's on the wrong side. So I went ahead to open one part that will be for the back. And this is what the front is looking like. Remember I said I'm making use of a structured fabric. All right, now we're going to be starting with the front pattern. And if you're new to this channel, I'll be dropping a link in the description where you can learn how to draft a front block. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing here basically is to what I'm doing here basically is inserting the vertical measurement starting with my chest line. The chest line I'm using here is 7.5, followed by the shoulder to nipple line, which is about 10.5, and also the shoulder to under bust, and lastly the shoulder to the waist for the front. Remember that this is just a half block. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and insert my shoulder measurement, which for this person is 15 inches. Okay, this is actually for a client. This is not my outfit, it's for a client. So this is 7.5 inches after division. And I'll go ahead to repeat same measurement on my chest line. Then I went ahead to create a straight line which is going to be my armhole line okay so i came down by one inch and for the neckline i'm making use of 3.5 and i'm going to be connecting that to the lower end to create my shoulder slope then i went ahead to look for the midpoint on the armhole line and for the front pattern i'm going to be coming in by 0.5 i also went ahead to divide the bust round measurement by four i marked that and i'm going to be connecting these using the curved part of my pattern master to create the front arm hole now the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to insert the bust that measurement the bust that measurement and for this bust that measurement i'm making use of 3.75 i'm going to be marking this up to the shoulder to nipple point i am going to be using this to create a straight line as you can see me do now on the lower end i'm going to be marking a 0.5 inch on both side on the lower end because i want to create a dart a waist dart and on the under bust line i'm going to be going in by 0.75 on both side this is just to tighten the under bust region and which really makes the style looks very 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 beautiful so after doing that i'm just going to go ahead to create my neckline and the neckline is just a really simple neckline it's going to be a square neckline okay it's going to be a square neckline but i'm still going to make a little alteration to this neckline so just watch what i'm doing so this is totally up to you you can decide to do whatever neckline you want but this is what my client wants and that is why i'm doing this so on the shoulder the remaining part of the shoulder now you're going to be dividing that part into two equal half and then you connect that part to the shoulder to the nipple line now another thing i went ahead to do is to curve down the bust region you don't want to have sharp edges while you are sewing okay this part your that so i'm just going to curve that region i'm going to blend it in and i'm going to curve the region okay the next thing we're going to do now is to insert our waist round measurements okay and you're going to be inserting your waist round measurement divided by four after marking that point, you are going to be adding the number of inches you use for your dart. For this particular one, I made use of one inches on the waist region. So I added that one inch and of course my seam allowance of two inches. I went to the top part toward the armhole region. I also added two inches, which is going to be for the seam allowance. So this is what I have once I'm done adding every allowance now my front waist is 16.5 why my shoulder to waist at the back is 14.5 so after removing the front and the back 
I'm left with two inches and I'm just going to, okay, use that to create my bust that as you can see me do. So the next thing I'm going to do from this point now is to go ahead, just take a look at the pattern and then you can go ahead to cut. Now, because I'm going to be closing this bust that the first thing I did was to cut through my armhole. As you can see, I cut out the excesses I'm not going to be needing. And after that, I'm going to be cutting through the line of my shoulder down to my shoulder to nipple point. After cutting through that line, I can go ahead then to close my bust that as you can see me do. Now, if you notice on my bust that I did not trim every excess away this is because i needed little allowance to be able to you know blend in the shortage on my bust that i hope you understand what i just explained if not you can go back and see what i did so i'm just going to use my marker to connect the two points together to prevent that shortage and after doing that i went ahead to trim every excess as you can see me do and then I'm going to be cutting through that that point also went ahead to cut out this neckline okay for necklines like this i just love to cut out the square or the round first then while i'm sewing i will go ahead to do the second um the other parts so after cutting out the dart, I noticed I was having sharp edges on the side front. So I went ahead to blend it a bit. And this is what the side front is looking like. I'm really sorry, fam. I don't know why my pattern paper is just folding today. I really don't get it. But anyway, <laughs> let's continue. So this is what the front is going to be looking like. And the next thing we're going to do now is to quickly draft the back. For the back, it's pretty easy. All you need is just a normal back. All I'm, I have here is my chest line, my shoulder to chest line, and my shoulder to waist for the back measurement. Remember I said the front and the back waist measurement are different. That's for the shoulder to waist. So everything I did in front, let's say, the shoulder slope i went ahead did the same at the back the armhole i went ahead did the same at the back the only difference is the neckline and the zipper allowance that was placed at the back okay so i'm still going to drop the link to how you can draft a basic back block so that you get to understand this better all right, and for this back, I'm just making use of a basic dart, as you can see. So I'm just going to make a basic dart that is going to be that is going to get um, to the point of the chest line. So that is what I did. I added all my seam allowance, and that is going to be all for the back pattern. If you've watched up to this point and you're getting value, please don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to turn on your notification bell so that when I post new videos, you get to see them. And more importantly, don't forget to share with your friends, okay? I post sewing tutorials on this channel and thank you for your love recently. Thank you for the views. It's been massive and I'm really grateful. All right, so back to the tutorial. The back pattern is ready, and I'll just go ahead to trim this out. So onto the sleeve tutorial, you're going to be needing your basic sleeve for this particular design, okay? Just your basic sleeve, your desired length and everything. Now, if you look at this sleeve, the upper part, like the midpoint, is kind of curved and it's lower compared to the two ends. So for my, I want the sleeve to be like, um, let's say five inches, okay? Then I'm just going to make use of my pattern master, as you can see, to create a curve. It's that simple, like it's really simple. Just determine where you want your sleeve to get to for the midpoint that is curved. Then make use of your pattern master or you can make use of your hand to create a curve. 
okay so this is my curve this is what it's looking like and you can have two of this pattern which can serve as a guide to you because we are still going to be plates and um, creating slash lines on these and spreading it so you need something to guide you when you are done okay so this is what the sleeve is looking like once i'm done i'm spreading out so the next thing we are going to do now is to create slash lines on this now this is totally optional if you are fine with your sleeve like this just to create the curve design then it's fine but if you want to really make a stylish sleeve then you can go ahead to create slash lines you can just decide to do whatever you want okay now i ended up creating many slash lines on this because i really wanted this particular sleeve to look um to be puffy but one of the things i realized at the end of the day was i had little fabric so i i should have known better but because i had little fabric i just had to make do with what i have so i could not really spread so my advice to if you are trying out the sleeve especially if you want something really exaggerated and detailed you are going to be needing like fabric I'm going to be needing more fabric so i took my time to slash this and this pattern actually is unfold like yes i was cutting both parts together and i took my time to slash through the lines but i did not slash to the end i just slashed very close to the end and i'm slashing the upper parts not the lower parts where not the lower parts the upper part so in case you want to create puff you want to gather or you want to pleat it's going to have to be it's going to be on the upper part but if you want to create um if you want the gathers and the pleats to be on the lower side also you can decide to you know cut through it so this is what it's going to look like at the end of the day this is what the sleeve design is giving me after slashing this okay so this is what i really wanted i really want to spread as much as this but after cutting out my pattern my front i realized i had little fabric left which was not funny so i had to manage and this was for a client so i had to make do with what i have so this is just me cutting out on fabric so that was little spread i had to do and i just went ahead to cut the second piece using the front piece so at the end of the day after gathering it to my original measurements this is what it's going to be looking like it's just going to look a little bit gathered at the top so you can use pleats if you want okay so another important thing you need to know that for this particular design you need a lining yes if you really want it to look stylish you have to line it on the inside you can make use of the same fabric to line it which is what i recommend professionally or if you don't have you can just make use of your lining you can use another color or the same fabric but professionally i recommend using same fabric so i went ahead to cut out my pattern as you can see that's my fourth pattern my front side front my center back i already have it's cut on fabric then i'm left with my center front so for this i decided to use a duchess fabric yes this duchess is really thick i love the quality really thick and has a little bit of shine so after cutting the front this is what the front is giving me the center front i mean so i'm going to be placing the side front as you can see and i'm going to be holding this down with pin if you're a total beginner please do hold this down with pin then i'm going to be sewing all through to the top and for the back this is what the back looks like i had to join some parts for this particular back pattern because my fabric was not enough so i'm going to be covering this also with sliding and i'm going to be doing this off camera okay so for the front i told you that yes it's a square neckline but why am i saying square rectangle neckline but then um it's going to be having a little v neck open v neck in between just about 2.5 inches so i'm just going to be sewing that and i'll show you what it looks like so this is what it looks like i've turned with my lining okay all seams are inside as you can see this is what it looks like i did not pad this clothes no padding or whatever this is just a basic shoulder that 
and after doing that i'm going to go ahead to you know place the back as you can see me do i'm going to be placing the back block on it and i'm going to be joining it at the shoulder point i'm going to be joining both sides together and of course i will attach my sleeve while doing that you just attach your sleeve just the way you attach your normal sleeve nothing is changing except for the point where you need to gather your sleeve so this is what my sleeve looks like after turning with lining so i turned with lining here instead of the fabric then i had to top stitch at the lower end on the fabric so this is what it's looking like so the upper part is open and what i'm going to be doing is that i'm going to bring my pattern paper in place this is just the extra i had okay and what i'm going to be doing here is that i'm going to try to gather the excess i have to fit into the pattern paper okay to fit into the pattern paper so that i can have something that is accurate and that is why i said you need a spare pattern paper to be sure of how much allowances you have for your gathers or your pleats i hope you get that so after i have been able to establish that i just went ahead to create just little pleats then i'm going to stitch on the inside okay using my seam allowance so i went ahead to stitch on the inside and after doing that i notched the middle and i just fixed that on the upper block that is ready so after fixing fam this is what it's looking like this is what the sleeve is looking like yes even though it was not as full as i really wanted it to be because i had to explain to my client and she said she was fine with whatever i can come up with she just wanted that fabric to be there if not i would have outsourced a different fabric so this is what it's looking like at the end of the day and yeah, i really love the fabric i love the color i just love it so this is what the inside also is looking like this is what it's looking like on the inside and this is what it's looking like on the outside all right fam i went ahead to join the lower parts and this is what the final look is giving yeah i love this outfit what do you think do let me know in the comment section thank you so much for watching and yeah this is what the final look is giving this is just on a mannequin though and i really love it what do you think thank you for watching and bye see you